Felix here. Welcome to this pre-market live. And we've got some really exciting stuff to talk through. We are going to talk about Palantir's new deal, and it's a monster. And I'll explain all that in a, in a moment. We're also going to talk about China's response just literally out 30 minutes ago. And we'll talk about everything else that's going on in the market. The Chinese massive rebound in stocks today. Before we do, I want you to do just one thing today. One thing only, and that is sign up for the free webinar. Do you want to beat the market in 2022? Do you want to have the best year ever? Come and join us for the free webinar this weekend. It'll be on felixfriends.org slash webinar. You have to sign up. It won't be on YouTube. There won't be a replay. So either you sign up or you miss out. You also won't be seeing me on Saturday night or morning rather. So I have one more free thing for you, and then we're going to get cracking with the news here. UBS have put a list out of their top 40 stocks outperformers. Again, I've made a beautiful, beautiful benchmark for you. Here it is. Uh, with all the key metrics that I look at, you can filter it, you can mess with it, you can copy it, you can download it. Uh, so take advantage of that. The link again is here, felixfriends.org slash top 40, top 40, and, and, and get your hands on that. I, I find these very useful. I often just find different stocks, different industries, different sectors that sort of stand out. And it makes me, even if I don't buy them, I think it makes me a smarter investor. So I highly recommend you check that out, felixfriends.org slash top 40. Now, without further ado, I think we should have a quick look at the pre-market because it's glorious and it hasn't been glorious for some time. So we should enjoy it. PDD up 8%, NEO up 5.2% to $34, plugs up, squares up, Barber up to 1%. 29 US dollars, which for me means I'm in the money. I just need to hold, hold that till the 18th and my options are going to be beautiful as they should be because it was a really high probability trade. SoFi is up, Open Door, eHang, Tiger, Coin, Lucid, it's all up basically. NVDA, Uber, pretty much everything in the market's up. Can we find one thing that's down? Pfizer. Okay, that just means people are less worried about COVID and volatility is down. The rest of my entire um, NASDAQ list here is in the green, which is, I mean, literally we haven't had that for a while. And what does that show us? Well, it shows us the market goes in waves and swings and roundabouts and we must learn to live with the volatility and not overreact, not sell on those red days and then buy on the green days. We should do it the other way around. And that's also one of the key things, market psychology, that I teach. And our Master Stocks course is open for enrollment only this week. It closes again this weekend. Uh, so if you want to jump on that, go to felixfriends.org slash stocks, take advantage of that 29% off coupon. Build Wealth is the coupon. And is with all my programs, 90 days money back guarantee. All I ask is that you actually take the program. I think you will get a tremendous return from it. That's what I want you to do. Should you not, you get your money back. So absolutely a zero risk investment here. And it teaches you a huge amount about uh, market psychology and much, much more. So go to felixfriends.org slash stocks. And shall we talk about the Palantir deal? I think we should. So I posted already on the Discord. You can see it over here, and it's got one thumb up, up, thumbs up so far because I literally just showed, uh, posted this. This is out just about an hour ago. German chip chemical supplier to spend one billion US pairs with Palantir on supply chain data. It's quite a big one. This German supplier of chemicals and materials, and who is it? It's Merck. Have you heard of Merck? It's a massive chemical, pharmaceutical, everything supplier. And they're forming a joint venture. So they're actually forming a company, a joint venture with data analytics firm Palantir to solve chip industry supply chain problems. So that really is something, isn't it? And let's go down a little bit more. So the... Um, Okay, the, the company in the US that they have is EMD Electronics for its North American electronics business uh, because they don't want to be, oh, sorry, the unaffiliated pharmaceutical company of the same name is confusing. So they are called EMD. Supplies, it's it listed in Germany. It supplies a range of chemicals used by chip factories, which are expected to expand if US lawmakers pay, pass a 52 billion aid package to bolster domestic chip manufacturing. So they're going to, 
heavily go in, into that. The company is going to spend $1 billion at a site in Arizona, California, and Texas, and Pennsylvania. The chip shortage needs industry-wide cooperation to resolve the supply chain issues consumers are facing, says the chief executive of Germany, German's firm's electronics unit. Merck said it's forming a joint venture with analytics firm Ballantir. The joint venture will aim to pull in data from material and chemical suppliers on one side and chip factories from the other and analyze it to improve efficiency. So it will just be like a transparent supply chain. Both the suppliers and the chip factories have extensive trade secrets and have historically been reluctant to share data beyond their own organization, said Matz. We will oversee the joint venture, which will be called Athenia. I suspect that Alex Karp had something to do with that Athenia. What does Athenia mean? It's probably something deeper Greek meaning or something, doesn't it? Let's Google that here quickly. Athenia. Um, okay, here's the press release out two hours ago. It's Greek. So we heard that right. Uh, it's a place in Greek, actually. What does it mean? It's a baby name. Okay, it's got to mean something. You radiate understanding and compassion. People sense your warmth and fairness. Okay, never mind. Okay, never mind what Athenia means. It's Greek. And it'll be housed in Merck's uh, subsidiary called EMD. Uh, that's separate from its unit. This has, been the, this has been the hurdle of solving this problem of supply chain of inefficiency for years. Uh, Merck says, because of the hesitancy to share data, until we came up with a concept of how we are structuring the data in a way that there's no IP contamination, we couldn't get over it. So they never, ever managed to find a solution like the one that Palantir have put out here. So this is quite a, um, I think this is a big one. I think this is a really big one. This is a key supplier of chemicals and materials to chip conductor, semiconductor manufacturers, which of course is an industry going to hugely take off in the US as the US aims to be more self-sufficient. And these guys are going to have this joint venture of Palantirs will have all the data, not just of the suppliers, but also of the chip manufacturers themselves. And they'll know exactly who needs what. So it's pretty tremendous that they're able to do that without sharing trade secrets in our in IP and so on. Uh, actually, I've got on the screen by accident our Patreon link uh, for that. Actually, we are just adding some really, really great spreadsheets that you can use. So this one here, for example, is a snapshot of key metrics. So you can type in here, for example, PLTR, and then it pulls up live from the internet for free all the key data, including all the key metrics that I look at. You can do that for any stock. It's instant. It's completely free. And I will also be uploading shortly a dividend tracker and also a portfolio tracker, both for US and international stocks. So if you want to jump on that, it's available from the investor tier upwards, so $7.50 a month upwards, which is like, what is that, 20 cents a day or something, uh, 23 or something like that. So you get access to that in, in, in addition to the beautiful community that we have and everything else that I share with you. So do check that out. So um, if anybody has any questions on that Palantir deal, do shout out. And if not, make sure you are signed up to the free webinar this weekend. It's going to be a great one. I um, um, Rudy Mer Merck is already a customer of Palantirs for a long time. Yes, you are right, but this is a different deal, and I think this is a different Merck. Uh, so Merck Palantir, um, I think they have the pharmaceutical Merck as a customer. Yes, do they? German lab supply company Merck. So how many Mercs are there? Merck KGAI Biotech. So they just do loads of different stuff, do they, Merck? So they do chemicals and supplies for chips as well as healthcare, life sciences, electronics. Yeah, they do all of that. Um, 57,000 employees in 66 countries. Okay. I always just thought that that was just a, healthcare kind of a company. Is Merck KGI as Merck? Okay, despite the shared main name, Merck and Co. and Merck CG KGAA operate as two separate companies with a distinct identities, branding, and portfolios. Um, okay, so they're separate. They are separate indeed. 
So I think that the Merck deal we knew about before was with the pharmaceutical Merck and not with the Merck KG AI, the technology sort of material supplier. So yeah, I, I think I think there are different ones here. I, I, I think there are two different Mercs. Very confusing in Germany. Uh, there are two different Mercs. Maybe it's parts of the same family or something, but they are definitely uh, not the same. Uh, we're going to talk about the Palantir deal some more. We're going to talk about Neo. We're going to talk about Baba, and of course, all your questions. So don't be shy. Now, there's one thing, a bit of education I want to get out here because I've seen literally this mistake about a dozen times over the last two or three days on Twitter and everywhere else, both from creators, from YouTubers, uh, as well as other people. I'm not going to name and shame anybody here, which is why I crossed out the, um, the, the this Twitter screenshot here. But this is what people are saying, and it's a it's a, it's an easy one to make. They're saying, look, eight hundred eight institutional owners in Neo, the same as last week and the week before. They're not selling. Follow the big money. And people have kind of been saying this all of last week. And in a sense, I, I think it's good people take a longer term view. But uh, they think that the reported trades that we see on websites like Fintel. So we go to something like fintel.io, neo institutional ownership, for example. And then you, get, you can scroll down. It's, it's more or less free. You can see here the trades, right? Let me get a magnifier. Am I allowed a magnifier? Yeah, here we are. Um, you see the trade details here. You can see, so, you know, Kingsview bought, I don't know how many shares, 8,000 shares and so on. Um, you know, Northern Emerging Markets bought 383,000. And people think, well, look, they were buying on the 6th of December and nobody sold anything. That's great news. So nobody sold in the dip. Why are we falling? This is nonsense. This is the filing date. And I can't stress this. This is this, this more super, super important to understand this. The filing date usually is about 90 days after the trade or about 45 days after the end of the quarter, depending a little bit on the, the, the structure of the fund. So these kind of posts that you see a lot of, especially on Twitter, where people are saying, look, uh, institutions just bought today. Wow, let's follow the money, the big money and all this stuff. It's completely nothing to do with the trading date. So just because they reported this here on the 26th of Dece December, which looks like it was yesterday, uh, that trade probably took place about two or three months ago. And we don't know exactly when, and we find out about three months after it actually happened. So this data, take a bit of a pinch of salt. They could have already sold the, out of the position. And again, you wouldn't know until the end of the next quarter. So be very, very cautious when you see this. It's a very, very common mistake. And it's easy to get caught up in it. I can totally see why it is confusing. Uh, but very, very important. And, and you know, I've made the mistake uh, a, a long time ago, thankfully. Uh, but lots of people are still making it every single day. So when you see it, just be polite and just say, guys, note, this is the filing date. This is not the trade date. There could be easily 90 days in between the two. So just be cautious. I'd love it if you spread that information, if you are on Twitter or wherever else you you, you share stuff, Facebook, Reddit, and, and so on. Um, very, very important. I think people get that. We do share a lot of the, these kind of trades also on our Discord, but I always make sure filing date is in capital so everybody understands uh, the, the difference here. So um, moving on from the educational part of this here, uh, I should, of course, always say none of this is financial advice. This is for entertainment only and, and education. But you've got to check your facts. You've got to be smart about it. You've got to uh, pick your own stocks. And if you want to know how, well, join our Master Stocks program. It's available for enrollment only this week. It'll close again at the end of this week. So take advantage of that 29% off coupon build wealth while it's there. And the link is felixfriends.org slash stocks. I also link to it in the description below. Now, I want to talk a little bit about China because China's just released this here today. And I again show you the dates because sometimes I get the dates wrong uh, as well. And this is literally just out, uh, literally about 15 minutes ago, I'd say they put this live. They, the CSRC, which is the Chinese Securities Regulatory Commission, the sort of SEC equivalent, they had a meeting. And they talked about delisting and and um, 
what the US is doing. So they said the members made recommendations on further promoting the opening up of China's capital markets, stepping up supervisory capacity building, deepening international cooperation, improving sustainable finance regulatory regime, and driving green economic transformation and development. They welcomed the CSRCs, which is China's SEC, recent efforts in enhancing communication and mutual trust with relevant US regulatory agencies and suggested that the two sides should continue to tackle the issue in audit oversight cooperation with a professional, rational, and pragmatic approach so as to jointly build a stable and predictable supervisory environment for global capital markets. Now, that's a pretty friendly message. That's a not a very aggressive message. I think it's kind of one of let's actually genuinely talk. We've seen much tougher lines in the past. So I, I take that as a positive. I take that as a genuine desire to actually want to solve this. Uh, I do think there are solutions to this. I actually suggested one uh, on the Discord a few days ago uh, on the weekend. I just had this sort of brain thought and, and I said here, we just shared it as well on here. I, I can't find it now because there, there are too many things on here. But um, if you want to join the, the Patreon, again, the, the link is down below, felixfriends.org slash Patreon, and you get access to that and lots of live trackers and, 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 and spreadsheets and, and so on. So you can track your portfolio and you can look up all the key metrics and you can track your dividend portfolios and all this stuff. Uh, lots of brilliant content coming there. So my thought is that, look, Hong Kong regulators already comply with the US. Ch mainland Chinese regulators do not. So there might, and, and the Hong Kong regulator, the Hong Kong SEC, was granted access to mainland Chinese audit papers only last December, December 2020. That required approval by Beijing, and they did because the Hong Kong Stock Exchange wanted access to that. So there might be this kind of roundabout way whereby. Hong Kong releases information to the SEC and mainland China doesn't have to change their laws. I think that could be a way of going about it. The other way could be that mainland Chinese companies restructure. So that say NIO would restructure and form a holding company, which is based in Hong Kong, shovel around all the subsidiaries underneath it, and then that would be the US listed listed entity essentially in that way they would fall under Hong Kong regulation which is allowed to comply with the SEC requests uh, other than the mainland so I think there there might be more kind of um, you know slightly out of the box solutions to this that could be explored and I, I think it looks to me like they have a genuine desire to do so. I also don't think, and Deutsche Bank said that earlier today and I also going to put a video out on that later um, I just recorded it that they don't think the US is quite ready to destroy literally hundreds and hundreds of billions of market capital and an enormous transfer of wealth. Because think about all the pension funds, all the funds, all the retail investors who are invested in something like 270 Chinese companies listed in the US. A lot of wealth would be destroyed and the whole thing would move to Hong Kong. So they would, in one stroke, create this a monster stock exchange here in Hong Kong, and they would massively hurt uh, US investors in the process. So I, I, I don't think that's quite going to happen there. But I, you know, I, I'm an eternal op optimist here. So uh, I, 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 you know, you might have a different views on that. And I would definitely say that there are certainly in the short term, some very significant risks with Chinese equities, as we've seen. So always be smart about what you're investing in. And your diversification is more important than ever. Now, also on this note, I looked through what the SEC has said on this. So the SEC put out a statement on um, their financial reporting, literally again yesterday. And again, that's all about uh, the Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act. And they mentioned China in this, I think, only twice. And that's here, they say, um, we continue to work diligently with other offices and divisions of the SEC to bring it to the attention of investors, other risks related to investing in emerging mar markets, including China. And then, for example, we recently um, put out a bulletin, sort of an educational thing about the risk investing in, in, in Chinese based operations. Uh, very few mentions. They also put out a webinar for investors on international issues. Uh, now, this webinar does not mention China once. 
which is quite bizarre, really, or VIE, so anything like that. But this is the document they're referring to. Uh, there's also a release out from the September 22, which is the actual rule that the SEC just put into effect. Does it mention China? No. Oh, it does here. Yeah, sorry. It does. It does twice. This is the bit here. So they say here, the board was prevented from inspecting registered firms in mainland China, Hong Kong, to the extent that they compassed, uh, compassed, encompassed the company's operation in mainland China. But very, very kind of soft language, I, I, I would say, overall. Uh, so the SEC, I think, is a bit of a paper tiger here. I don't think they're really going after this in full, in full speed. If you've just joined, make sure you download my, or rather UBS's, top 40 buys. Uh, Felixrents.org slash top 40 is a brilliant benchmark here of their top 40 stocks that they think are going to outperform. So download that. It's free. Uh, make sure you join the webinar down below, Felixrents.org slash webinar. That'll be this weekend. And you wouldn't want to miss that because it won't be on YouTube and it won't be replayed here either. So come and join us for that. Let's look at the pre-market. It's still glorious. Neo's up 5% here, 3396 Barbara is up 4.7% to 129. Literally everything is up. The whole market is just green. I think we can summarize it as that. Uh, literally the worst performer is Pfizer, down 0.8%. But everything else on my list here is in the green, which is brilliant. Um, Exxon, nope, there is a, a Neo deal with Shell. I've done a video on that. Uh, search on my Neo playlist. You see the Shell logo on one of the recent thumbnails, and I go you through the deal. It's a new one, and it's uh, useful. Uh, drone, thank you very much. Yes, there is the lease plan deal in Norway. So lease plan is the largest car leasing company in, in Norway or maybe even Scandinavia. So that is definitely useful for Neo. I might do a video on that if it's, um, I don't know how big the deal is at the moment in terms of sort of what it actually means, but it's definitely great that they are making those progress, that progress and, and that they would, it, it basically will allow access to uh, car carpools and car fleets of companies, right? This is what really what this is about. Um, where can you see the 40 stocks? Okay, phoenixrents.org slash top 40. Uh, I also always put the links in the description of the video. So if you click that little sort of arrow down or something below it, uh, you think you can get onto that. Um, Cifro, yes, I have been buy, buy, buying Facebook and PayPal. I, I do. I, I like it when stocks are down. Basically, Christmas sales came early. That's the way I look at that. Why? Because I don't think I look at the fundamentals of companies rather than their recent performance. I couldn't care less, really, how they've done in the last few weeks or few months. It means very, very little. Uh, really, it's all about a long term performance here. And OK. Let's do a quick recap then on the Palantir story because I put that in the headline and I'm sure some of you uh, are, are joining uh, for that very reason here. So this is the deal. German chip chemical supplier, they're called Merck. This is not the same Merck as the pharmaceutical Merck. It's highly confusing. The two are permanently in court over their names, but they're both very substantial companies. So this one is Merck. KGAA, which um, has $17 billion revenue and fifty seven thousand employees. Uh, they also own things like Sigma Aldrich and, and all sorts of stuff. So um, what is the deal about? Well, here it is. So they're basically supply a lot of chip manufacturers with chemicals and, and, and materials. And they are investing a billion dollars in the United States because the US is spending big on chip manufacturing and they're a key supplier and they're formed or are forming a joint venture with guess who? Palantir, it's gonna be called Athenia. And under this joint venture, they are collecting and sharing data from suppliers. So the supply chain of chip manufacturers, that's you know chemicals and alcohol and all the little bits and pieces and components. And also they're getting the data from the chip manufacturers. And that's, they say in here in this article, 
they've never managed to do that before because the chip manufacturers have plenty of IP, plenty of trade secrets, and they don't want to share their data. So the hurdle has been basically this unwillingness from everybody to share their data until we came up with the concept of how we're structuring the data in a way that there's no IP contamination and we couldn't get over that before. So that's what they've managed to fix with Palantir here. So essentially, through this joint venture, this company will know not only the inventory and, and, and everything else that the supply chain has of supply of, of chip companies, but it'll also know what the chip companies have themselves, how much they're manufacturing, what they're doing, where they're doing it, and where their bottlenecks are. And if you know that, then that data is incredibly valuable and you can fix your the, the sort of supply chain problem across the industry, right? So this is an incredibly important, and I imagine also government, US government encouraged joint venture here that could literally transform the semiconductor manufacturing bottlenecks that the US has been experiencing. Uh, Exxon is sharing ARC bought the dip on XPANG. Absolutely. You're quite right on that. Um, Intel, well, Intel has sort of missed the boat, right, on the whole GPU thing, which is why NVIDIA took over. Uh, are they going to be able to turn that around? Quite possibly. I think they. it's a good company. It's a reliable company. They've got plenty of money, but they definitely missed the boat there. So that's the only concern. How quickly can they catch up with that, uh, at least on those kind of applications? And uh, Fox, out, I am with you on the, that. And I think that's basically the sentiment here this morning that Omicron is not that scary a variant and it seems relatively mild and the market is therefore breathing a sigh of relief. Plus, we have people like JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley coming out this morning saying they actually welcome a bit more COVID, which sounds bizarre because they say it'll reduce consumer spending in the US. And that will slow down economic growth. I think it was JP Morgan who's lowered their growth forecast for 2022 today. And they're saying that will actually take the edge off inflation because consumers will spend a bit less. And that is actually therefore a good thing. And it'll allow the Fed to be a little bit less aggressive than they would otherwise need to. So it might be our inflation break this particular virus. And they are also all saying, basically, don't get out of the market, which I, I, I'm certainly with that. So, um, uh, Dennis, thank you very much. We've talked about Babylon in the past, I think, uh, not that recently because it was a while back, but thank you very much for, for putting that out there. Um, okay, Rudy is asking, will we see Balibaba at the end of the year in the $200 range? I, I very much doubt it, uh, to be honest with you. I, I, I don't think it's going to fly that quickly. Uh, they have made some management changes just. So they replaced Maggie, uh, who was the CFO, which I think is good news. If you listen to the uh, earnings call with me, uh, she sounded absolutely exhausted and spent, which is probably been a very, very intense a year and a half for them. So they've got a new CFO uh, who was at PwC PricewaterhouseCoopers for 11 years. So I posted that uh, this morning here on the on the Discord. Maggie Wu is, um, is going to retire in April. Uh, so I think that's important information. Again, if you want to get on the Patreon, well, you know which way to go, phoenixfriends.org slash Patreon. And we're adding some really exciting stuff also to the Patreon members. So if you join on the uh, 750 investor tier or up, you'll get access to things like this snazzy little spreadsheet I just put out yesterday. For example, you type a, type a stock into this. Someone just mentioned PayPal into the little blue box. And boom, you get all the key data, including all the key metrics I look at for picking stocks. And I will also put out by tomorrow, I think, a dividend portfolio tracker, possibly, and also a stock tracker. So you can um, look up all the key things for your portfolio. And again, all the data is connected. So it all pulls things out of the from the internet. And it's free, of course, for our Patreons. So come and check that out. It's going to be, um, we're going to add, add more and more great stuff there. Uh, 
Uh, for Baba, you're asking price target. Look, I, I, I would honestly be happy if we end the year at, in, in the 130s or some, something like that or 140s. We do have, and I don't mean to be a, a downer on Baba. I just think there's, there's so much going on there. Uh, and we have um, an investor day on the 16th and 17th. And of course, I cover that. So that's really, I think, what could be a catalyst. How's that perceived by analysts? How are they able to convince the big banks the whales about Alibaba's future and where their growth lies and so on. So that's really what we need to hear because we haven't heard that since the whole restructuring, like what really is is the future. Um, uh, and Alex talking, I think, here about uh, supply chain, uh, chip production. I agree with you. The U.S., when they put their mind to it, they can achieve things that's pretty incredible. We never would have thought the U.S. would be independent of oil. They were at one point. Um, so they could go back to it if they wanted to. Similarly, with, with, with chips, I think they can. So that's also why this Athenia Palantir Merck JV here, I think, is so important because it will allow and facilitate, facilitate uh, this, um, this, this move uh, very, very quickly. Um, Uh, Desmond knows my my options trade on Baba because I, I share all of that stuff on the Discord, uh, all, all my trades. Yes, Desmond, exactly. I'll be happy with that. Uh, though, um, yeah, I think I think there is a lot of opportunities in Southeast Asia. There are a huge number of essentially ethnically Chinese-run businesses and so on all across Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, and so on. So I think there is a big big opportunity here. And uh, with without the sort of political headwinds that they're facing in the U.S., so yes, I think I think you're you're right there in terms of growth. We've also seen them a, a, across other parts of Asia. Uh, so yeah, be interesting to see what they put out there at the end of the month. Now let me do a quick recap here. So we've got a new joint venture between Merck, the German company, and Palantir. The the, the German company is investing a billion dollars into their supply chain that's what they do they supply chemicals and components to the chip industry and they're going to really ramp that up in the us because obviously the us is investing a huge amount into the chip manufacturing and they are formed this joint venture with palantir to collect data from both the chip manufacturers and the supply chain side to see exactly who needs what, what's going on where. And they've never been able to do that because nobody wanted to share any of their data because it's all top secret you know, IP. Uh, but with Palantir, they are able to collect the data without revealing any trade secrets and any 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 IP. And they said, look, we've never been able to do this before. This is a, this is a breakthrough for us. And I think it will be a breakthrough for the US chip industry. So I think it's quite a big deal here. And Dennis, exactly, it's EMD Group. That's precisely what this, this, the, the business is called in the US. Uh, Merck's division in the US is called EMD. Okay, shall we have a look at the life market? It's a lovely one today. Look at that. Uh, PDD up 11%, NEO up 5.8%, Coin up almost 5%. What's Bitcoin doing? 51,000. Uh, Etsy is up 5%. Trump's back is up 5%. Interesting appointment there today if you follow that story. Square up 4.6%. Baba at 127.92. Ehang up 5%. Oh my God, everything's up. Let me refresh this here. Uh, and materials is up. Workhorse DD up 4%, uh, which is good for me. Uh, SoFi up. Baba up. Tesla's up uh, to 1042 x bang at 47 paypal up to 190 today palantir at 1933 that's still up 2.8 percent from the horror that it has been twitter is in the green everything is basically green apart from moderna and pfizer because we are no longer that bothered about this latest covid variant we've seen off tougher ones than this one so uh, that's basically what the market is saying and i think that's a that's a nice sentiment here uh exxon saying neo's only nine battery swap stations away from the target for the year well i mean 
uh, William Lee said earlier in the year that his internal target was much, much bigger than that. So I think they're going to keep ramping that up and I think they're going to surprise us. Uh, Dennis, thank you very much for putting this out here that Palantir will join the financial crime leaders briefing tomorrow. Uh, that's an interesting one. Uh, they're obviously big in on that. Uh, all the insider trading on US stock exchanges is, is monitored by Palantir software. Neo is indeed on fire. You are quite right here, uh, Fox out. Uh, that's it's really uh, rather nice to see happy to look at any of the stocks just shout them out uh, also if you joined about the big mistake everybody's making at the moment i'm not pointing fingers here at anybody which is why i uh, removed the person who tweeted this but it's not just this one individual i literally seen dozens and dozens of very popular uh, twitter channels and reddit channels and so on making the same mistake here the problem is people think that trades reported institutional trades reported on any stock, whether it's a NEO or anything, they think those trades were executed that day. And it's really, really important to understand that that isn't the case. So if you look at something like fintel.io, which it tells you inside, uh, institutional trading here, really important to read the heading. It says filing date. And filing date has nothing to do with the trading date. It's typically about three months later. Typically, we find out about three months after the fact. So say, you know, these guys here who bought Vanguard on the 29th of November, you bought 1.9 million shares of NEO. In theory, they could have sold all of that by now. And we wouldn't know. We wouldn't find out till about three months later. So really important that you take the right lessons and conclusions from these institutional trades and realize that these are always late so i think that's a that's a a, a good one Uh, Antonio is asking about uh, Polestar. Look, for me, I, I've been in on this for some time because I've been following this story since like January this year. I, I'm happy to pull the, the, the chart up for you here for it. And uh, GGPI, typically when the merger is actually consummated, the, the, the stock has a bit of a spike. So at the moment, we're trading at $12.20 or so. Obviously, the last few days were just sort of this market sell-off. Um, the company at $10 is valued at about $20 billion. So 20% more, that makes it about $24 billion. Compare that to Rivian or Lucid, I personally find it interesting. I personally find that makes a lot more sense to me for a company that's actually will have delivered 29,000 cars by the end of the year than all the other ones. But that's just my view on it. Uh, if you want to look through my previous videos on on um, look on the uh, Polestar playlist I have, uh, you, I, I'll go through all the valuations and all that stuff for you. Or if you want to come to your own conclusion, which is what I always highly recommend, don't listen to anybody. Come and join our Master Stocks program enrollments open this week and this week only until the end of the week until sunday and it's 29 percent off uh, the coupon is build well so go to, go to felixfriends.org slash stocks and as always all my courses are risk-free you can take the full thing and that's what i ask you to do to take the full thing you've got 90 days and if you weren't satisfied if you didn't get a massive return from this which i would expect you to get you get your money back um, no questions asked so check that out and, and thanks for bringing that up Uh, Keith, you're asking, is that the German politician, Olaf Scholz? No, absolutely no views uh, on, on, on him whatsoever. And, okay, you're saying um, that the massive highs at the beginning of the day are going down a bit. Well, you'd expect that, wouldn't you? Well, whereas in Neo, it's still up 3.8%. Typically, when you open up the beginning of the day with sort of 7, 8, 9, 10%, unless there's some massive monster news the people start to take a bit of profits and that kind of thing. At the moment, the market is basically indiscriminately up. I mean, something that's why one of the reasons I have EDU on here, because it's one of the worst companies out there, I think. Uh, it's a Chinese educational stock with essentially a non-profit business model, which is it's no place to be listed, I think. And if they are up 5.3%, I know it's just market sentiment because that stock shouldn't be up 5%. So it's just as an indicator for how people are, are feeling this morning. And they're feeling pretty bullish. Uh, they're feeling pretty happy. And 
pretty much everything is up. Rivian is down one and a half percent, but still trading at $115. So the rest of the market is gloriously green. Dennis talking about Foundry for Crypto for Palantir here. Yeah, thanks for that number there. I, I have no idea where, where you got that number from, but you're saying $4 billion of crypto have been stolen. They are massive thefts regularly, all the time. Uh, and it's, it's a big deal. And in theory, it should be able, we should be able to prevent that because we can track stuff, right? So Foundry for Crypto could be a really big one, not just for the crypto platforms, but also for the whole blockchain industry and the whole transformation of how we make payments uh, uh, and so on. Uh, I'd love it if you smashed the like button, if you destroyed it for me and for the fluffy goats. Uh, I'll be making the um, November donation very shortly as well. I need to tally up all your likes. And of course, I'll post that and share that as always with complete transparency. If you've only got to do one thing today, sign up for the free webinar. It's this weekend. Actually, we're running two depending on what time zone you are in. So you can select the one that suits you best. Go to freelixfriends.org slash webinar or QR code scan that qr code here on the screen you can do that on most with most phones nowadays just with a with a camera app and then it takes you straight to the website uh, you have to sign up for it it won't be on youtube it won't be repeated here i, I won't put it live so you have to de to do that and also take advantage of the ubs's top 40 stocks what they think will outperform here's the great big benchmark and you can not just, um, I see about 10 of you are, are on here at the moment. I'm just going to put a filter on it. So you can basically click on file, make a copy, and then you can edit this yourself. You can uh, sort it. I like to sort, generally speaking, by return on capital employed. I think it's one of the most meaningful metrics out there to start filtering things and then go through some of the other ones. So what I would do is I look for a stock and I go, oh, okay, uh, AMD looks quite interesting on this metric. I like that one. So I put a color on that. And then I go through over to the right and see, oh, you know, where are they doing really well? Wow, long-term earnings growth. That's pretty impressive. I put some colors on those. And I sort of go through those to kind of highlight what's impressive. And, and that way, you start to weed out the ones that are most interesting that you can look at a little bit more. So go to felixfriends.org slash top 40 to take advantage of that in its full. Uh, Howard from Athens, uh, welcome. Could we have a quick roundup? Let's do a quick roundup here. So we have, let's start with that. Palantir, new joint venture with no less than Merck, the German supplier to chip manufacturers, semiconductor manufacturers. They supply chemicals and components. And they are spending a billion dollars in the US. They formed a joint venture with Palantir called, uh, suitably as you are in Greece, Athenia. Um, can you tell us what that means, Athenia? I, I don't know, but it's Greek. And essentially, it's um, they're going to pull data from material and chemical suppliers on the one side and chip manufacturers from the other side and analyze it to improve efficiency. And that's incredibly important. And they basically say, look, we've never been able to do this because nobody wants to share their data because their data is always full of trade secrets. But with this Palantir platform, they can do it without revealing any trade secrets because Palantir has such enormous and incredible control of the data that's actually shared out there. So everybody has confidence in it and that's a big one. They say that's been the big hurdle of solving this problem for years. So they've had supply chain inefficiencies in semiconductors and as the US is ramping this up, I think this is going to be a big one. I think this is going to be an important one. Now, the second thing uh, we just have on the China story, China delisting, literally about an hour before we went live, China put out this announcement, the Chinese essentially SEC. Uh, they put out this statement here saying that we made recommendations on further promoting the opening of China capital markets, stepping up supervisory capacity building, deepening international cooperation, and we welcome recent efforts in enhancing communication and mutual trust with relevant US regulatory agencies and suggest the two sides should continue to tackle the issue in audit, audit oversight cooperation with a professional, rational, and pragmatic approach so as to jointly build a stable and predictable supervisory environment for global capital markets. I read that as a fairly friendly message. I think it's a not an aggressive one. So I think it's a positive one that put that out. Uh, and then we also had the one from two days ago, which I think you've already seen. 
the SEC has also put out a bunch of stuff, which again, I think is actually pretty soft in tone. It mentions China very, very little, only where they absolutely have to. So what's the roundup on that? Essentially, the law hasn't changed. Nothing's really changed. The SEC hasn't identified any companies. And even when they do, they have three years to fix it. It's a political issue. It's got to be fixed. Uh, there are about 270 Chinese companies that will be affected. If the US went through with this, uh, they would destroy likely something like 200, 300 billion US dollars in capital. So it would be a massive destruction of capital, mostly held by US institutions and US ind in individual investors. And they would also move 270 companies to list in Hong Kong. Uh, and do this in the US. So they would create an enormous stock exchange here in Hong Kong. Um, and Deutsche Bank today said they don't think that the US is quite ready for that. So uh, Philip says, are we winning a rally or the beginning of a bull trap? Just your guess. Yeah, it could be. But you know what, Philip? It doesn't matter. Why doesn't it matter? So as long as you buy good stocks, as long as you buy stocks with good fundamentals, they will perform in the long run. Even if you mistime your purchases, it really, really doesn't matter. Uh, so for me, when the market tanks, I'm like, yes, let me send some more money to the um, the brokerage and buy some more stocks because I was going to buy them anyway a week or two later, and it would have cost me more. That's the way I look at it. Uh, Alex says, Athenia, the um, um, Unsterbliche, okay, in German. Uh, if you, well, someone who's, well, what's the English word for you cannot die? And there is a more, 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 more better, better phrase for that. Brian, will you be will live for Neo Day? Well, what do you think, Brian? Yes, of course, I'll be live for that. Um, okay, so that's kind of the quick recap there on, on that. And then we also looked at a bunch of other things. Uh, we can have a quick look also at the key things that are happening this morning. So basically, people are getting over Omicron. People think it's a bit of a wimp of a virus compared to Delta. And even though it's more infectious, it seems less harmful. And therefore, um, the market's quite happy. Now, the other thing is that people like UBS and Goldman Sachs have come out today, uh, JP Morgan come out today, that they think Omicron will reduce consumer spending in the US. And that's a good thing because it'll slow down economic growth, which to them is a good thing because it'll take the edge of inflation. And it's going to slow down the labor sort of uh, employment market recovery a little bit. And again, that'll slow down the Fed a bit. So that's actually quite good. Uh, JP Morgan recommended buying the Omicron market dip because uh, they actually think it's going to hasten the end of the pandemic. So uh, basically, market this morning looking very, very green. I'll, I'll show you what it looks like uh, in the futures. Here it is in all its green glory. Uh, NASDAQ up almost 2%, S&P up percent and a half, Dow Jones index half a percent. Let me show you a market map as well. We should have one by now. Yep, here we go. Look at that. Is that pretty or what? So the only thing down really is um, pharmaceuticals because, you know, less COVID, less money for them. Absolutely everything else is pretty much green. What's UL up here? Okay, that's red. But yeah, so the market looking pretty good. good. I think your portfolio should be looking pretty happy this morning. Alex is saying English language lacks some words. It, it, it might well do. Um, Desmond says we're going to have two days of Alibaba investor meetings and then we're going to have the Neo Day. Absolutely. It's going to be exciting. Immortal. Oh, thank you very much. That is the word. And that is a beautiful word. I couldn't think of it. I, I don't normally translate German and English much. It just sort of sits in like two parts uh, in my in my head uh, so I, I i don't i don't really do much translation there thank you very much for throwing that out there z monkey as well john's asking about neo's potential release of a mass market product i i don't think it's priced in no i don't think people have really thought this through i think it could provide some real value of course lower margins but at the same time it'll boost the margins on neo because it will 
roll all the R&D expenditure, which is going to be more and more significant, got to double about every year, over more cars. And it's easier, of course, to sell more mass market cars, at least in theory. So I think no one's pricing it in because the last attempt to do that wasn't very successful. So I think everyone's being a bit cautious here, which, which is fair enough. So yeah, but it could be a potential additional upside as well. Um, Dennis, you're completely right on the wording. Eternal is probably better or eternally immortal, something like that. What is the chart you're showing? That is the the stock map. map. So it's basically all the key stocks, all the key um, everything. I'll, I'll put the, the link into the chat here for you. Uh, you can check that out. It's, it's from Finvis. It's free, by the way. MC, have you seen the worst from the stocks? I think for the moment, look, there is a potential that the SEC starts identifying companies to actually comply with this because they haven't done that. And if they do that, it's going to give the market another jolt, just like it did about this time last year, was it January or something like that. So every time they do one of these little steps, it's going to like rattle people and then people get used to it and forget about it. And then I think the world continues onwards. Make sure you sign up for the free webinar down below. Uh, also, bear in mind, you can give the gift of financial freedom this Christmas. All of our programs, if you go to felixfriends.org slash gift, you can gift them and you're going to get a beautiful digital gift certificate there. And if you haven't already, come and join our Patreon. Come and take advantage of uh, something like this, for example, which is uh, pretty cool. So any stock you want, so something like, uh, say, Neo, type it in here in the little blue box box and look at all the data it pulls up and it's completely free. All you got to do is join the Patreon from our second tier upwards. So from our FF Investor tier upwards, uh, you get access to these and there are more coming. I'm working already. I've completed one more and I think there's going to be two or three more coming uh, to give you access to all the key data that I always look at. I pay for actually, but you don't have to because I found you some free sources here and that's um, hopefully going to be very useful for everybody. So I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you tuning in. I wish you a beautiful trading day. Come and join our most beautiful and most exciting course member community. Uh, join the Master Stocks program. Learn to build lasting wealth through stock investing. Take advantage of the coupon code down below, 29% off. Build wealth is the coupon because that's what I want you to do. It's completely risk-free as always. You can take the whole thing. And if it wasn't for you, as long as you've taken it, you get your money back. So I appreciate you tuning in and I'll see you on the next one. I've got at least two more videos coming out today. So make sure you're subscribed and see you on the next one.